again. Um, hey guys, welcome to today's seminar. Um, get started here. So my name is Said Kadir and I'm the data engineer for the Hanlon Labs. Um, today I have with me Akshat Goel, who's, good, who's the lab assistant. He's gonna be aiding me in today's seminar. So today we're gonna be going over two different platforms, one being the Capital IQ platform and the Bloomberg platform as well. So um, basically the idea of today's seminar is to get you guys more familiar with both of these platforms, uh, kind of help you um, get set up with the access as well as kind of go over uh, different data sets and different um, tools that will be applicable to you know, your research or uh, things that you may use. Now these platforms uh, go very in depth. There's a lot of things to cover. So we're gonna kind of do our best to outline um, the more important uh, aspects of these uh, two platforms. So that's the goal for us today here. Um, so the first thing, we're gonna, first platform we're gonna be talking about is the Capital IQ platform. So in order to access the Capital IQ platform, um, you're gonna have to be in the, um, university's domain. So if you want to just use the um, use Capital IQ on campus, you can go ahead and just register um, your account here. Um, and here's just a PDF of how you can get it set up. Uh, if you go to the Capital IQ uh, website here and just click the new user option and submit your email, they're gonna send you back a form where you basically create your credentials and you use that same credentials to log back in. However, if you uh, decide to use the Capital IQ platform off campus, what you're gonna have to do is set up a VPN. Um, here, I also linked the page as well. Um, and they give you instructions on how to set up uh, the VPN on the IT website as well. So once you get the VPN set up, or if you decide to use it on campus, you're pretty much good to go. Um, you can log in and then have access to that platform. So basically, Capital IQ covers uh, a plethora of different topics and data sets and tools. Um, some of the tools that they do have are different visualization tools, uh, intraday pricing uh, on different frequencies. You can customize it to how you want. They also have historical data for different companies, uh, different types of data, announcements, mergers, acquisitions. They also have company analysis. So you can do a breakdown of different financial data, as well as um, any documentations and um, different statements pertaining to these companies. Um, they're accessible in, the, in greater detail in Capital IQ. They also have different transaction data. So any uh, big transactions and mergers uh, are highlighted in Capital IQ. They also ha have a sector breakdown and in-depth financial data. We're going to be covering a couple of these um, in a live demonstration uh, next. So I just wanted to highlight some of the things that you know um, we're gonna be going over. So here, if you go to capitaliq.com and go ahead and just log in with your credentials, you're gonna be you're gonna come across this uh, initial dashboard here. So what this dashboard allows you to do is kind of give you a customization portion and a snapshot of the different things that you know, you may need on like a quicker basis. So if you go here um, on the bottom here, you click the dashboard option and click widgets. You have a bunch of things you can add here basically to customize what you wanna see on a quick uh, glimpse, like different financial data as well as uh, uh, earnings activities and global market information that can all be accessed through the dashboard. Um, portion right here. You can also edit the layout if you want a different layout. So basically what this does, it gives you a good snapshot of the entire market, different market trends, and kind of um, centralizes all the data in a quick view uh, section as soon as you log in. So that's a good customization tool if you want, you know, things to be uh, organized and quickly see the data itself. Um, again, there's a bunch of options you can see here. And I'm just going to go over some of the um, more uh, useful ones and things that you may need uh, on your day-to-day uh, -day or research uh, basis. The next portion here is the alert section. This one's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, you can set up a alert based off of, you know, um, customize your alert. So you can send it to your 
um, any email you'd like, you can customize this as well as there's different breakdowns. So if you see here, um, if you go ahead and expand this, there's different filters that you can add to your alerts. So based off of um, the different things you need, you can tailor these alerts to what you uh, need uh, specifically. Moving on, we're gonna go into this financial uh, glossary portion. So what this basically does is it kind of um, explains what these different um, financial tabs are. So as you can see, this cash equivalence, you can see the breakdowns here. There's a bunch of um, uh, items that are included in cash, um, cash and equivalence. So it gives you a good uh, kind of breakdown on what everything in everything is um, everything that's included. They also have the plugin formula for Excel. So if you need to use an Excel sheet for anything, the plugin formulas are here as well. Now this is mainly used for any audit analytical information. So if you're doing research on different companies and you wanna do um, audit information or you wanna audit a different company, this is a good tool to kind of refer back to and use as reference for that. So moving on, um, I just wanna to touch on the settings option. If you go into settings and go into regionals, what you can do is basically um, customize this part. So a lot of uh, the information in Capital IQ is done um, with the respective, based on the respective geographic location. So basically, if you're seeing any trades or any information, it's going to be based off of the company where it's located. So what you can do here is change it to um, the US dollar. So that makes it, that makes um, kind of looking at this information a lot easier because everything is more, everything is uniform and it's more easy to kind of um, get your head around and you don't have to um, go ahead and convert it as well. So that just makes everything a lot easier. If you would like to add that, you can. Um, the next portion here, we're just gonna go ahead and look up a company real quick. Um, let's just do Amazon. So here, uh, once you pull up a company page, you see the basic breakdown of the company um, um, and a whole bunch of financial information. And as you can see, there's even more um, <clears throat> uh, options that you can choose from. So um, let's go into this corporate timeline option. So basically what this does is highlights the entirety of a company, like different key developments, SEC filings, as well as any announcements. It gives you a good breakdown on um, the, company, the company and um, kind of all of the develops that I had along the way. You can also kind of um, uh, have this stretch through a greater timeline. Um, again, you can also step into these different dates, much like most of the things in Capital IQ. If it has a hyperlink, you can step into it and kind of explore it in greater detail. So that's always there. Um, the next tab I wanted to go over was the competitors tab. So this is this is used to basically see the, um, the competitors for your respective company. As you can see, these are the top competitors for Amazon. And this is a good tool to use to basically forecast any um, forecast any prices to see if any of these have key developments that um, can alter prices for both Amazon as well as the company itself. So this is a good comparison tool. And again, you can step into any of these options here to get you uh, more, um, more acclimated to what these companies are and what they have to offer. So moving on, the next thing I wanna talk about is under financials, there's something called key st uh, stats. And there's a whole bunch of tabs up here. I don't want to go over everything, but um, there's some things I would like to kind of touch on. As you can see, here's here's the balance sheet for the company, and you can customize it to the different time frames you'd like to see, um, as well as the period for different quarters. And uh, this gives you a good breakdown of all the uh, um, aspects or, or contributed factors that go into this balance sheet option. And if you go ahead and click here, it gives you a, a breakdown of you know, the formulas and the different um, numbers that are actually being used. And if you go into further detail, you can actually um, see the 10K filing that Amazon did um, for, um, 
for this period and see where the number exactly originated from. And you can also save this uh, to a PDF or an Excel to kind of refer back to it later on your own time. So that's a useful tool to, to have. Um, so the next thing I wanted to go over was multiples. And this is basically, if you want to do any analyst insider information, um, this is a good tool for any forecasting and whatnot. And these are actual analysts that you can kind of, you can search up if you do a greater um, look into these, uh, these future values of uh, um, this company and how they're expected growth to be. Um, you can explore that as well. I don't want to go into too much uh, detail. So the next portion is the segment. So for Amazon, you can see these are broken down into different segments based off of geo, uh, geographic location. Um, so for Amazon, you can see the North America and, and then the international uh, revenues and it's uh, broke down with the company uh, company's locations and the different locations that generate different um, different revenues as well as other um, assets. And this is the total uh, total geographic locations. Um, this is a good breakdown and if you want to do any research on the company based off of you know um, based off of the location and how these numbers do and how they correspond to each other, that's always there. Um, the next tool, let's go into markets here. And under markets, um, here's a snapshot of the sector breakdown. This is a good way to kind of compare the different markets. These are the top performers of top performers based off of the different sectors. And you can compare it to how the total market or the S&P 500 is doing. And here's uh, for the last five days, these are the breakdowns for the performance for different sectors, as well as um, here you can see, you can also step into these as well to get you a um, better, uh, better you know, understanding and more detailed understanding of them. And here's a visualization tool for those who need a visualization on um, how these are bro broken down into. So here's an option for that as well um, in the different industries. So here's a tool if you just need to have in, do market analysis on, um, on different uh, segments. So moving on, we're going to go into this M&A. So this is also market analysis. Let me just load up here. So here again, this is this is transaction data. So if you go under market analysis and then M and A, this is all transaction data. Here's a good visualization uh, quarterly for the last couple of years um, on different transactions that were made. Here you can see a um, the top performers for tra top transactions that were made, as well as here you can see the the target of the transa uh, transaction and the uh, those who acquired the transaction. And it gives you a good idea of what's going on mergers and acquisition wise. Um, and it gives you a breakdown for different companies as well as you know the amount they spent and it, it breaks it down uh, very nicely here. And here you can see the year over year of different acquisitions based on sector. So Capital IQ gives you a good breakdown with sector and um, a good visualization aspect as well. So the last thing I want to go over for the Capital IQ platform is this charting. So what charting is, is basically you customize your chart based off of what you need. So let's add, for example, Apple here. And they have a list of metrics. So let's go ahead and add the asks and bid prices um, for Apple. And now these metrics, uh, there's a whole bunch of metrics that you can use here uh, are a list of them, if you go into advanced lookup, you can you have a bunch of options that you can choose from. We'll just stick to this. Um, and you can also add annotations. So dividend payouts, as well as any uh, SEC filings and bankruptcies, you can add these annotations here. And you can obviously change the frequency to uh, whichever you would like. Um, and you can also compare it to any other stock or ETF. Here, we're gonna go ahead and add QQQ and you can see how they um, reflect off each other uh, here. And it gives you a good visualization of what's going on. Um, lastly, I just wanna mention everything that we went over, um, there's an Excel portion. 
So you can export everything to Excel to refer to it back and refer back to it later. Um, the same thing with this, any charts or anything, you can export it with the Excel option that's always located on the top here. Um, so anything Excel related, you can kind of export it and go back to it and do your deeper analysis um, on that as well. So that pretty much wraps it up for Capital IQ. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go moving on to Bloomberg. And I'm gonna let Akshat kind of go over Bloomberg uh, platform. Um, and we're gonna kind of explore the platform itself. Hi, uh, so yeah, I'll be going over the Bloomberg platform today. Uh, so first uh, is first, so I just want to highlight that uh, when we are going over the Bloomberg platform, we'll not be going too deep into the platform because Bloomberg has a lot of functionality and we can't cover everything in, in a small uh, seminar today. And if, if you are interested to learn about Bloomberg in detail, uh, Stevens has a course called Intro to Bloomberg. Uh, I think the code is FT511 which actually goes in depth into the Bloomberg terminal and which teaches you how to use different functions, different uh, tools which Bloomberg has. So in terms of how to access the Bloomberg platform, uh, so Bloomberg has two platforms. One is called Bloomberg for Education and the second is the main terminal where you get the actual data. So Bloomberg for Education is basically, you, you need to access that to basically uh, get your terminal access. And you can also, uh, do certificates and look at tutorial videos uh, that they have on Bloomberg for Education portal. So, so the link for the Bloomberg for Education portal is uh, pretty simple. It's uh, called portal.bloombergforeducation. Uh, I'll quickly go over the platform. Uh, Uh, and as a new user, you will have to register for it. Uh, for for this account, you don't need an act, uh, you don't need an approval from Stevens. You can just simply uh, sign up and register for it. But uh, if you want to access terminal for uh, for the terminal, you will need to uh, go to the FSC web, uh, to the Handon Lab website on this uh, link where you can request resources. You'll have to fill up this form to uh, get your access from Bloomberg. This is an option for Bloomberg. And your request will need to be get approved from your advisor or or from a course uh, uh, a professor who if you're taking a, a class which requires Bloomberg. So you'll need to get their approval. Once you have that approval, you'll be able to access uh, Bloomberg uh, on uh, from Stevens. So this is that. And uh, okay, I'll try to log into the Bloomberg for Education platform. Okay. I'll probably directly start with a terminal. So, so, so there are two portals as I told you. One is a Bloomberg for Education, where you can actually uh, see tutorial videos and get access to terminal. And then on on the Bloomberg uh, on the same platform uh, on the Bloomberg for Education platform, uh, you have an option to get the terminal access. And for the terminal, there is one thing to uh, one thing to keep in mind is that for uh, you need a Citrix uh, web client. Without a Citrix web client, you can't run a Bloomberg terminal on your system. So, so how the Bloomberg terminal work is basically uh, you go to this link called uh, bba.bloomberg.net. Uh, I'll try to log in with my uh, account, but once you register, you'll have your own login credentials for for this. And it, it has a two-step factor authentication. So I'll probably use my email to uh, log in into this. Once you log in, uh, so there are two ways to uh, use Bloomberg. One is you can use the Bloomberg terminal. And second is if you're using an Excel add-on for Bloomberg, you can also use that. For, for today, uh, I'll be going over the main Bloomberg terminal, which probably everyone is interested in. Once you click on the launch button, uh, it, it kind of downloads the uh, Citrix web app. Uh, and once you open this, it will open on a uh, Citrix web client. Uh, 
also you can also use the bloomberg terminal on uh, if you are in stevens you can also use the bloomberg terminal in the hanlon lab in the hanlon lab we do have uh, bloomberg terminals so in whichever system you see the bloomberg keyboard is probably powered by bloomberg so you can access the bloomberg terminals on those systems as well So this is the standard uh, a window that opens up once you uh, once you access Bloomberg. So the first thing I wanted to highlight was the BMC certificate, uh, which is a certificate by Bloomberg, which uh, pretty much covers different asset classes and different functions you have in Bloomberg. So if you want to explore a certain asset class, I would suggest you to go over the tutorials for that specific asset class and uh, understand it more because there is too much into Bloomberg which I can't cover today and every asset class has different functionalities which are available and if you're exploring a certain asset class uh, you can just go over these uh, Bloomberg uh, videos and uh, BMC videos and uh, even you can get the certificate which could also help you when you are interviewing or applying for jobs because some of the companies actually uh, I mean they they highlight, I mean, they kind of uh, get interested in a profile if you have uh, the BMC certificate. Uh, so that is there. I think the next thing I wanted to go over was a tutorial for IBM. Let's say, uh, let's say I want to talk about, uh, look at the IBM US equity. I'll probably go to the IBM US equity and here they have different functions. So if I just want to look at the uh, line chart for IBM, I can just do IBM GP uh, on the uh, on the main search bar, or I can just come to come here and click on IBM uh, line chart. So this will basically uh, give me the line chart of IBM. I can probably just like we had in uh, Capital IQ, uh, we can edit this chart, chart and add more details in it, or or we can even change the frequency if you, if you want to. If I want to look at five-year data, I can I can look at five-year data. Uh, I can even look at like the whole historical price. So this is this is there. I think it's good. It's e easier if you're doing a project which involves uh, historical prices. You can easily get that data here. Next, I think I, one thing I wanted to highlight was we also have the options uh, data available on Bloomberg. But I think the frequency over here is uh, daily frequency. It's not uh, hourly or minute level frequency. So you need to keep in, that in mind. And it has data for all the. Uh, uh, all the strike prices or for all the calls and posts, it has data for both. So you can get that data over here easily and it's easily downloadable also. So if you, if you're just, uh, if you just want to use it for your analysis, you can do that. Uh, I think next thing is the company financials. You, if you're doing some kind of fundamental analysis, uh, then you have all the company analysis here. If you're doing some cash flow modeling, then probably uh, you can use this data for, for those kind of modelings. And if you, if you are of a uh, master's in finance student, uh, then also uh, this data would be helpful. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers the highlight that I wanted to go over today. But if you just want to uh, get more in depth through understanding of the tutorial uh, of the platform, I suggest you, uh, I think the best way to do it is through uh, BMC uh, because it, it covers so much in depth that I can't possibly even talk about it uh, in, a, in, a, in a 30 minute seminar. I think that's one thing I would suggest. And yeah, I think I'll keep it open for questions. If you have any questions for both the Capital IQ platform and for, for Bloomberg, yeah. Yeah. So I have a quick question. So in your Bloomberg terminal, you have options. Yeah. What's, I guess, what's the general process to extract that? So okay. That a, yeah, so that's a good question. So I'll quickly go over how to extract the data from. I'll quickly go over a tutorial of uh, how to extract data from uh, Bloomberg uh, into Excel. Let's say I'm looking at a uh, financial analysis. So there's an option of export here. You can export into Excel. Let's say current template. And 
So you get this data exported into Excel, then you can just open it uh, in Excel and use it. Okay. This is a snapshot time or, or whatever we're pulling is a snapshot time. Right. For options, it's it's difficult to get historical data from uh let me try. Yeah, I think it's difficult to get the historical data. But we have, if you, if you need some historical data for options, uh, we do have uh, access to uh, Thomson Douglas data set. They do have uh, option data available for like for hourly frequency or for even minute level frequency if you want. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's what I know. Yeah. So this is mostly to look at the current price for uh, if you're trading or so that's more, Bloomberg is more used for that kind of uh, uh, analysis. If if you're you, if you're trading or if you want to look at what's the current price, then you probably use Bloomberg. Yeah. Anyone else? Ha anyone else has any question uh, through Zoom or any anywhere? Okay. So we're probably gonna wait here for five minutes if anyone has question, and then uh, we'll probably end the seminar. Yeah, and I'll just stop the recording.